Ketchikan, Alaska, everybody. I just got my ferry ticket from the airport here. Six bucks, not too bad. All right, I'm heading on board the ferry across this pretty narrow stretch of water. The other side is just right there. Pretty nice day. It usually rains quite a bit here, so this is nice to see some sunshine. And this is just the outskirts of Ketchikan, Alaska. All right, pulling away from the airport right there and crossing the little channel between the airport and town, which is on the other side of the water right over here. And you can see this massive cruise ship passing by here, which is a celebrity cruise liner. So not much to that. It was about uh, not even five minutes. Very short. Is the uh, ferry doing well? Like uh, I noticed they pulled out of Prince Rupert, right? Mm, they've had some issues, that's for yeah. sure. Um, I think when it comes to the state as a whole, the southeast tends to get the short end of the stick. Sure, yeah. And I don't think they uh, really think about or lend it enough credence to the, like how important the ferry is for, for sure, people yeah. in, this, in yeah. this part of the state. It's a two-night trip to get down to about, Bellingham? Or? Yeah, yeah about, okay. And some change. Uh, most of these buildings are from the 70s and 80s. Okay. Uh, they built an additional cruise ship berth out at Ward Cove. Um, and it can only take smaller ships, but then they bus them into town with the rest of the tourists, which just compounds the problem of traffic congestion, yeah, road, sure. road degeneration. It's one of the problems, this main drag that runs the length of, you know, this side of the island is a state highway. Okay. So the city yeah. can't really do anything to appropriate funds to fix it. Um, but all these huge tour buses and tour vehicles tear up the roads every summer. Mm. Um, but all the taxes that come in from cruise ship passengers uh, have to go directly back into the ports and harbors. Uh, just so it's, yeah, the roads have become a big uh, political issue. Yeah, here. fair enough, yeah. How many cruise ships per day come in here right now? Like one a day? There's going to be four downtown and two out at the Ward Cove. Oh, wow. A total of six. That's so crazy. The busiest days will have uh, close to 17,000 passengers. Wow, man. Do you get much tourism here that's not cruise ship? Yeah, we get a lot of independent tourism. Yeah. Uh, that's most of the people staying at the hotel, for instance. Okay, are sure. Tourists yeah. Like yourself. Yeah. I mean, unless you're here for work or something. Yeah, yeah. And what kind of service do you have around here? Is there like a full hospital? Like yeah, we've got a hospital. Um, it's got, you know, uh, they, they've got, you know, we've, we've got most everything you would need. ER, yeah. OBGYN, uh, okay. you know, but they also, I mean, when things get too serious you know if somebody's got a serious illness that yeah. requires very uh, like specialized care yeah yeah um then generally people get uh medevac through okay. guardian air flights down to uh seattle or bellingham or something oh, okay wow so ways away i was thinking maybe they take people out to juno or something no but, uh, i guess seattle's probably closer than uh well, it's anchorage just, it's right? just better care okay that's you're always fair, gonna yeah. find better care yeah. on the mainland Alaska is just pretty behind when it comes to healthcare and mental health and substance abuse yeah, infrastructure. So fair. problems like that, you generally have to go out of state to get any real help. Oh, okay. If you want to go to rehab or or if you want to send somebody to rehab yeah. or to uh, mental health inpatient or outpatient or if somebody needs like like physical rehabilitation in like a big way, then yeah. you really got to go out of state. Okay, it. interesting. What brought you up here then? My dad was in the Coast Guard, and this was his oh, okay. final station before oh, okay. he retired from the Coast Guard. Oh, nice. My family has all since moved away. Okay. And yeah. uh, this was just the first place where I ever lived for more than a couple of years, so it yeah. always kind of felt more or less like home. Okay, cool. And this right here is the New York Hotel where I'm staying. Pretty historic, over 100 years old at this point. So you can see just how quaint and historic this hotel is, New York Hotel. Home sweet home. Very cozy, has some old school furnishings, a lot of character. So this was provided to me courtesy of the Ketchikan Visitors Bureau. So thank you so much Ketchikan Visitors Bureau for being the sponsor of this video. Beautiful views of these ferns outside. It's so lush and green here in Ketchikan. Pretty cozy place. So you can see the New York Hotel was founded in 
1925. Still houses the New York Cafe, which is right here, though it is closed right now. There's actually not a ton open right now just because it is Sunday evening. And tomorrow's Labor Day, so we'll see if anything is open tomorrow as well. It's going to be kind of not the most ideal time to visit, but uh, this worked the best for my schedule at least. So Japanese Americans founded the hotel, so very interesting. So it looks like back then, Ketchikan is divided along racial lines between whites, indigenous people, and Japanese. So Japanese American family started this place. I'm looking forward to poking around this beautiful first city of Alaska. Let's head over. So this is historic Creek Street, as you can see here. Looks like for 50 years, it was a thriving community of independent women who lived and worked in the houses along the creek. So this sign shows all the different houses owned by the various women back in the late 1920s. So these are all former brothels, evidently. Very interesting. Beautiful setting though, as you can see. I remember being here vaguely way back in the day. It's been a long time. It's been 22 years that I was in Ketchikan as a 18 year old on a cruise through the inside passage. So as you can see, it's pretty touristy, but uh, charming. But again, it is Sunday, so streets are pretty dead right now. And this historic building right here is called the Preacher's House. 1902, the oldest building here in Ketchikan. And it says that the preacher changed the house number on here to 208 to avoid the stigma of the red light district. So pretty interesting, but it's actually 28 Greek Street. I had expected that it would be raining the entire time I'm here in Ketchikan. So I'm delightfully surprised to see the sun shining. It's a really beautiful day. And I'll let you read that sign. It's pretty clever. So Dolly's house, and she was one of the creek's longest working residents or sporting women, as the sign says. So I think I'm just gonna follow the path here and see where it takes me. So as you can see, it is a bit touristy, given the amount of cruise ships that come through here. Just really low key, nothing's open because it is Sunday, but uh, kind of get the sense of it at least. And such amazing sunshine coming out right now. Great views of the creek right here. So you can see just how important salmon are. Huge sculpture of one right here. And those raging waters of the creek down there. And I believe there's a salmon ladder somewhere around here. Looks like this one was a 2013 artwork. Hard to see from my vantage point, but uh, you get the idea. So you can see this is an example of a kutia or totem pole, which are carved to honor ancestors, commemorate significant events, and proclaim the lineage of a clan. They're not religious objects. So I saw a lot of these back in the Queen Charlotte Islands, which is very close to Ketchikan. It's kind of the next island group south of here in Canada. Very similar culture. It's the cousins or brothers of uh, the local native tribe here in Ketchikan, but very cool to see these totems again. Absolutely impressive. I saw a lot of these out in Alert Bay as well. If you've seen that video of uh, the north coast of Vancouver Island, you might remember these as well. And this is the Whale Park, evidently. Nice little stretch of green space here in the very heart of Ketchikan Old Town area. Nice little clock here in the center of it as well. I don't really have any plans right now. I'm just kind of wandering the city and getting my bearings, but nice enough town. So this is Front Street right over here. And that is the famous Alaska's first city sign. 
The salmon capital of the world. That's very interesting, actually. Did not know that fact about Ketchikan, but uh, as you can see, it's actually a lot more built up than I thought it would be. Very bustling. There's a lot of people here. There's tons of tourism, both from cruise ships, but also just people visiting from the lower 48. So very cool. Lots on offer. The only downside right now is that everything closes pretty early here on uh, Sunday. So I'm mostly just taking a wander around town, getting myself oriented and uh, checking out Front Street, which is pretty decent. So as you can see, the sun is beginning to get a little bit lower in the sky, but uh, definitely enjoyed my little walk around the center of Ketchikan. Beautiful historic buildings, and you can see this raised platform right along the creek side. It's just so gorgeous here. All right, I'm heading back to the hotel. Just a short walk down here on the left. There is the marina and uh, Front Street just down that way. So it's a pretty walkable city at least. There's also a free shuttle service that takes you to all the local tourist sites and a pretty dependable bus service from what I understand. Definitely growing compared to when I was here in 2001. Wow. And it looks like some gray skies are moving in if you look closely. So I think the rain is on the way. I've definitely enjoyed some time to get outside in the sunshine though and soak up the beautiful environment here in Ketchikan. Really outstanding place. Again, this is called Alaska's first city because it is the first city that you reach when you're traveling north from the lower 48. This is right across the Canadian border, pretty much at the southernmost point of Alaska. The border of Canada is only about, well, I think about 20 or 30 miles south of here, so very near.